Hey, welcome to another edition of Kyle Meredith with It's the Interview Series presented by WFPK at WFPK.org, Consequence and the Consequence Podcast Network. Thanks as always for making your way here. Check out the series. Of course, you know what to do. If you like what you see, what you hear, hit that subscribe button. Uh, I put out three new interviews every single week, so it's a great way to keep up with all of your favorite artists. And I once again get to have one of my favorite artists, Jeff Amens. You know him from Pearl Jam, and right now you know him from Jeff Charlie. Hello, sir. What's going on, Kyle? It's great to see you again, man. Yeah, good good to see you. Yeah, and uh, and we were just talking off camera here. Uh, it's sort of a busy little time for you because because Def Charlie now, uh, which has sort of been, I guess, this, you know, you never know what it's called a side project, but it's outside of Pearl Jam, so it's another project, but this is something you've kind of been teasing for a, a couple of years here with some singles, but now we get the official album, right? Yeah, it's, you know, I mean, when we started, when John and I started playing together, we, there, there was never really an intention to, to make a record or whatever, and then when the pandemic hit, um, we just kind of kept putting one foot in front of the other, um, I would write a couple songs and I would pass them his way and he would take them into his laboratory and, you know, tear them apart and put them back together again. And, um, and then it started to just be this fun thing, sort of almost like, uh, like daring each other to go farther, you know, further with this stuff, um, just to see where we end up. And, um, it was really, it was really fun. It was, um, you know, we, I don't think we knew we had an album until we were a few months into it, but um, but uh, it was creative in sort of a, a really truly intensive collaborative way because we we didn't have anything else going on. You know, yeah. there was there was there was no hope of our our big bands of playing shows at that time. So, so we that's what's what we were doing. Yeah. Yeah. And for people that don't know, you know, John that you're talking about, we're talking about uh, John John Wicks, and it's I have to remember how to, to say his name with the plural part, otherwise you get the movie thing. But uh, yeah. but you know, so he was part of Fits and the Tantrums, and and so how how did you guys hook up to be to begin with? Well, he he originally he, he worked at a coffee shop um, uh, in Lower Queen Anne that um, one of my best friends Curtis worked at, and uh, I there there was like a two or three year period where I. If I was in town, I went to that coffee shop every day, and um, so I, I got to know him a little bit then. And then, and then I didn't. I completely. I mean, we were never like f like friends. We were just acquaintances. And then uh, I was at a. There's a little gym here in town, and they had a Christmas party. And he walked up, and he goes, he goes, "You remember me?" And I was like, "I do," and I can't remember. I can't remember your name. And he goes, I'm John Wicks. I'm good friends with Curtis, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, oh, yeah, yeah. And um, I didn't even know that he was a musician. Um, and uh, he, I think he had just joined Fits and the Tantrums maybe a year before that. I'd made, made that, made a record with him. And um, and then we just sort of stayed in touch over the, every once in a while he would play like a, a, a jazz improv show. And that was when I really like, I mean, he was incredible in Fits in the Tantrums, sort of doing that R&B thing. But then I saw him like do this jazz improv stuff, and it was just like mind blowing how how good he was, and like how great of a listener, and the like the deep bag of chops that he has. And um, I mean, at, at that at that time, I, I knew I knew he would be fun to play with. I didn't know if it would be, you know, creative. You know, yeah, I don't. I didn't think we'd write songs together or whatever, but. Um, he brings a whole different bag to the to the studio uh, mode, and so um, it's been really super fun. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. We got to, uh, those first two tracks you know, that you guys have put out so far, which uh, something real, which is like epic, and it's a fun little epic song. I mean, it's one of my favorite things that you guys. And then, and then there's the what is it? The uh, is that a part of? Well, it? no. There's that. There, there's uh, sitting around at home, which is a Buzzcocks. Buzzcocks. Yeah. So that's, I mean, yeah, what, what, does that just set the sort of sound for the whole thing? Kind of. Um, I mean, you know, we, we did a song, there was a song called Comeback Player of the Year that we did like four or five years ago uh, when uh, Dow, who owned the coffee shop that he worked at, who was one of my good friends, he passed away and I, I wrote the song. And um, when I played it for John, he's like, man, I have some, I have some drum ideas. And so, um, 
in, in Tom Waits fashion, I was like, what, you don't like my drums? Um, um, and, uh, but he came up and he like, he totally made the song like a legit song with just the way that he layered uh, drums onto that thing. And that was the first time that I saw him sort of work in a studio setting. And I was like, wow, he would be really fun to make a record with at some point because it was, um, it was unorthodox is, is, you know, kind of the way that he hears stuff is, is super um, unorthodox and, and in a really great way. And, um, and it's that, that's sort of how the record making went with him was he would come back with something that would kind of blow my mind and it would be, he would hear something, you know, in these songs that I was giving him that I um, never ever would have heard in a million years. And so that part's always, you know, if you're open to it, if you're open to somebody interpreting uh, your stuff, it's like, it's, um, it's the best part of playing music when you trust each other collaboratively and, and, um, and just go down some paths that are uncomfortable. And, you know, like, yeah, I mean, it might take you a couple of weeks to wrap your head around it. Um, and there were a few things that we, we went all the way out and, brought it halfway back but you know there's a handful of these things that we we went all the way in with it and um and those are kind of the most satisfying tracks like a year year or two later so yeah cool yeah i mean it, it definitely sounds different than any project you've been a part of and it's fun because at times it's like it's messy but it doesn't feel like it's going to fall apart and then there's the electronics part of it that comes in you know that i'm not quite used to hearing what you know something like that that, that you're a part of yeah. What so I don't and and maybe that's just a part of your process, as you're saying. It sounds like that you know, to a certain point, you write it, and then he starts to maybe construct and deconstruct it. But does that change how you then started to write the song? Did you find that it was sort of reciprocal like that? Uh, in you know, I think I think the thing that got retained in a lot of this stuff is like almost all the choruses are sort of like what went down when I put them down and. Often what he was messing with was just um, things rhythmically and in particular in the verses um, in, the, in the outros or, or he might he, he said he might say like, you know, this thing needs a better bridge or, you know, sort of challenging me to like, you know, rise to the occasion. And, you know, there was a, a lot of times when I record, record vocals, like there, there's a lot of tracks and harmonies and, you know, high stuff and he gravitated like something real he, he he kept just saying over and over for months like you got to just go with the falsetto on that song and i was like man i don't know that's like that's pretty naked that that you know that thing sticking out there is like you know it's it's uh there's a vulnerability there uh you know having that voice out there and he just kept saying it kept saying it and so i finally kind of started to believe it and that that's a pretty powerful thing when you have, you know, he's a, he, he's a really, he's a real, real musician guy. So, you know, he was sort of bolstering my confidence. And I think that allowed me to sort of take chances vocally, you know, that I probably wouldn't normally have taken just on my own without somebody there saying like, that's a cool part of your voice. Like, use, you know, use that, use that more. And it's, and it's the weird side of it, which I, I appreciate, you know, like I, I, I think uh, when I hear other people doing weird stuff, like I, I always kind of gra gravitate towards that stuff, especially when it's like believable, you know, mm. it's like, cause people are weird. So you, you want to hear real stuff. That's weird. You know? I mean, it's I've like, always said my favorite Pearl Jam songs just happen to be the weird songs. You know, I think when you guys do I, the weird stuff. That's what I love. Yeah. I think, I think me too. I think whenever, if I've had a little part in writing any of those weird songs, that's always like the home run for me. It's like, fuck, man, I, we got that song on a record. Like, that's so <laughs> awesome. You know, so. Playing, uh, of course, I'll get into it later, but, you know, with Yield doing the 25th anniversary, I was playing Push Me, Pull Me the other day for my wife. And I don't know, she hears this stuff around. I don't know that she ever paid attention to it. And she was even, she was just like, what is this? You know, and I was like, oh, yeah, no, this is where they, they have a lot of fun. And, you know, happy when I'm crying, I think was the other part of that whole scenario and uh yeah. you got weirder than that too but that was a great example you know it's just kind of pulling that yeah. stuff out yeah yeah um and 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 those moments as we're saying you know what losing my mind so what am i hearing at the beginning of that track 
is that a sample? Is that you guys talking? Uh, I'm trying to think. Liz, um, just the, no, that's Marlon. That's just Marlon, like riffing. So, uh, John came to me and said, "Hey, man, I got this. I got this friend. He's a comedian in L.A. who's got an amazing voice, and I've always wanted to do a project with him." And he goes, "I think." He goes, "If you, if you hear something," I said, "Well," and we were working on something real at the time. I said, "Well, you should just throw him that track and see what he does to it." And it was interesting enough where when we were working on lose my mind and preamble i heard i could hear his voice you know doing those parts and so it it really sort of um it just it, it makes you listen to the song in a different way the way that he presents it and so he sort of inhabited this character um uh in the verses of that song so the, whole, the beginning of that track and the verses is uh you know He's he, he's he, he's a character, you know, in the, you know, from the, the the newscast that I'm watching that's making me feel like I'm losing my mind. He's that guy. He's that guy. He's like, um, it's it's you know, I think partly influenced by you know George the George Floyd incident and, um, you know, just all the overt racism, you know, with our law enforcement and 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 um, he just went all the way with it and it it just it makes track you know it makes track for me so it, it it reminded me outside of the specific context of what you're talking about it reminded me of like like a tape a cassette somebody would have passed to me in the like the late 80s or early 90s you know and when sampling with you know because because it did yeah. I, I couldn't tell it like it felt like that it felt a little bit like am i supposed to be here in this you know and, and all of his tracks he, he you know he recorded he you know he has like a he has like a little road mic or something, but it's all, you know, recorded all that stuff on his phone. So it's, um, I think, I think the fact that, you know, we ended up treating his voice sort of to emulate really what happened, <laughs> you know, he, he was hearing these tracks in his headphones and he's like singing into his phone essentially. And, um, and then John, John would kind of chop that stuff up and, and often he would send two or three, really different versions of the tracks and so you could sort of it's almost like there's multiple people talking to each other or almost like a crazy person talking to themselves or, or something and so um uh yeah it's, i mean hopefully we more of this stuff like marlon's on everything because he really adds a you know he really adds a dynamic that that the, the stuff needed so right almost like in that negative land space i think that's what i was trying to say a minute ago you know that kind of stuff <laughs> um i don't know if i'm saying this right who is a ched man uh so ched man is um uh i i i built a skate park um uh well we built the skate park on the blackfeet reservation maybe eight years ago and um the second year, there was a little bit of graffiti on one of the bowls, and it said Ched Man. So I asked one of the kids that I knew, I was like, "Hey, man, what's what's who's Ched Man?" And he got in this whisper tone. He's like, "He's like Ched Man's the guy with the drugs, the bad drugs." And uh, and the way that he said it, like, um, it was like really spooky. Yeah. Um, and so I, it just sort of I just conjured up this character that you know the, so the ched man is almost like a boogeyman or something um but um he's also like um ruining people's lives and and then just going back and going like how did the ched man become the ched man and then really it's about like the you know the systemic annihilation of native peoples <laughs> you know that that was that, that was what i came up with so the verses are sort of these simplified uh it's a it's a simplified version of you know sort of what happened when the when uh you know after lewis and clark came out and uh and then they built a, the railroad tracks and the trains started coming out and basically bringing like disease and killing off the bison and like basically ruining um you know this uh this way of life that these people had for ten thousand years so um but it all started with that kid whispering to me, like, you know, like, he's the bad, he's the boogeyman. And so I, I really wanted those choruses to sound like super scary. So yeah. that's, that's, that was the. I love how so. that's so specific and so 
historic and that's you know at the same time and you know and 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 even on the surface it's a great punk rock track on top of that yeah 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 for sure you know. and john and john made that like my original drums were all sort of like double time the whole song and he sort of it's double time then it goes into the chorus and it just sinks down into this halftime heavy thing and it makes it so much darker yeah. um so that that was a again another instance of of John just hearing it in a different way and really sort of, you know, delivering the message through his, his drum part. Yeah. Cool. Well, it's, yeah. And you got that and you got tracks like watching the sun, which almost has like a sixties vibe to my ears and then too great, which might be my favorite. I mean, it's I, like, I, I know losing my mind comes out and that's like the first single I hear too great. And I'm like, that's the one I want to play on the radio. You know, that's wow. like some good stuff. On, and and I, I, I'm not going to go through it track by track, I guess what I'm saying, because I could, because yeah. every yeah. single song on here is so good and so unique. Uh, what else did I write down? Uh, what What are you saying or at the end of We Are Doing It? Uh, it's uh, it's basically German for uh, like, we, we, we don't, we don't know. We don't know it, but, but we're doing it. And it's, um, it's sort of like, uh, uh, you know watching the train wreck of you know we have all this scientific knowledge about what's going on with the environment but we can't stop capitalism from it's just like hey man we gotta make that dollar tomorrow so i know like all of canada is burning down right now but keep those you know keep those oil pipelines full keep them cranking keep the coal there's more coal going through you know missoula montana right now than there ever has been and it's like you know, there's a, I think one of the biggest, if not the biggest uh, coal pit in North America, um, you know, shipping coal to China, like twice as much as we were five years ago. And so it's like, you're just surrounded by just, you're just witnessing like this insanity, like, um, and so it's like, you know, it's like I, I over and over, you're just saying like, yeah, we deserve it. Like whatever's coming our way, we deserve it because we we've had every opportunity to like do something about it, and I'm as guilty as the next person. Um, but um, the people in power and the people that are running the big corporations are hmm. they're gonna they're gonna go to a deeper circle of hell than me. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, you know, we, in Kentucky, of course, we got McConnell here, uh, and and you have these people that drive around with the license plates that say "Friends of Coal." Like why, why? Because surely you you do know they know. I think they know. Yeah. And those yeah, are I, the cars, yeah. It's just I think it becomes this thing where I think and both sides are probably a little bit guilty of it, but where it's like nobody's going to tell me what to think, and that's what my grandpa did, and but whatever you know whatever. But like we you know we have all this you know new green technology where. I mean, even if it costs twice as much right now, like, why wouldn't we embrace it? I mean, it's, you know, I mean, New York City just had like, I mean, you might have even gotten some of the smoke in Kentucky. We did. Sure. Like, we actually did. Yeah. But that's, that's the new norm for us here uh, in the West. I mean, like Montana, we, we have our own uh, years where we have bad fires, but last 10 years, we haven't had that many fires here, but because the fires are so bad in Canada or in Northern California, or, or it just all comes to the Valley. And what used to be the best month of the summer, August is now the worst month. So the worst month of the year, of the, of the year. And so um, uh, that's the part where you're just like, come on, man. Like we're, it's like, we're being reminded, we've been reminded for 20 solid years that there's like, there's some crazy stuff going on. This isn't just like a, you know, a blip in the, you know, whatever their two scientists are telling them that it's, you know, this is just part of the ebb and flow of, you know, the heating of, up of the planet or whatever. Yeah. But, um, well, that's what we deserve it. Yeah. Right. Right. Cause that's reminding me, um, you know, I, I was earlier mentioned it was yield and it's the 25th anniversary. So of course I've had that on my mind when that came out and I don't remember if you were part of it, maybe it was you, I think it was you, maybe Ed as well, but you mentioned the book Ishmael by Daniel Quinn that you yeah. all had been reading that at the time which turned me on to it that's when i found out about it i ended up reading while quinn was alive i read all of his books and and it is because that should have changed me 
And it did in yeah. some ways, it, you know, because I was a teenager. And so it did put my mind. I'm agreeing with you on the we deserve it because I fucking deserve it. You know, I I, I was even yeah. like, like given that tool and somehow. Um, but I do. I put my hope in the people that I vote for that they're going to fix me for me. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm, you know, I think, I think, I do think that if our leaders, and we should consider ourselves to be leaders too. Um, uh, but we, uh, you sort of, you sort of hope that somebody's going to come up with um, a version of capitalism that's going to make it okay to do the right thing. You know, like it's, it's like, I mean, that's been what they've been talking about for 10 or 15 years. Like how do we make this green technology, like make money? you know and it's like and it's the question that you hear about homelessness they're like well if people could figure out how to make money off of homelessness like we would have cured it a long time ago and so but it's just it's it's brutally sad that like capitalism always wins no matter what it's like it's like and we fight you know we we we, we fight it within the band where we we talk a lot about it's like man like at the beginning, we were just doing our thing. We were just making art. So let's like, let's focus on the making art part of it. And then if the commerce comes around the backside of it, great. And if it doesn't, then you just keep making your art. And like Neil Young told us 25 years ago, like it, that's going to come and go. You're going to have high points and low points. And you got to just keep doing your thing. You just got to keep following your muse. And you got to keep making your art. And so um, you wish that everybody in their own lives could just afford to do that they could you could just like you know do your thing and it's the right thing you're making you're doing the right thing and you're not like you know throwing away like a box full of like plastic containers every week for from your blueberries and your whatever it's like and then finding out years later like oh yeah that stuff just usually ends up in the in the garbage it doesn't that stuff doesn't get recycled you're just like oh my god like we're we're all going to hell like <laughs> for our part in this so yeah. somehow that album with everything that we've been talking about i'm talking about the Def charlie record ends up being a fun record <laughs> that's, that's that's all john wicks man he's like the he's like the mr optimist mr pma right, PMA right. drums and, and it's like you instantly feel better so it's good even with what you're thinking about uh it's the great trick if you could do it as a songwriter um yeah. you know since I've, I've i've kind of hit back and forth on it i will touch into to pj land for a second here because um well first off you know i i, I was so i was talking with stone uh, stone was on here just a, a week or two ago and uh and he kind of said that oh we think we're getting to the finish line on this new record speaking of continuing to do your art which you know is great news no timeline obviously what that means um but but you know most of the time when you ask an artist the question at this point, what does a record sound like? They can't tell you anyway. They're like, I don't know. We're too far in it. What I think I'd be more inclined to ask you, if it's possible, is then what is defining this era, do you think, for what you all might be writing about? Well, I mean, you know, we've talked a lot about in the last three or four years is like how we we've we've sort of earned the right to like do whatever the fuck we want to right now and so like why like why wouldn't we like go all the way with that and um you know like you know saying like you know everybody make a list of the 10 you know things that you want to do in this band before we're done you know like where where you know where's the city that you've never played or where's the where's the venue you want to go back to or what's the kind of song you want to write or what's the what's the topic that you want to, or what's the cause you want to get behind within the context of the band and I, you know those are sort of the things i talk about so it's like we it feels like we're we're sort of at this point where we should be able to turn like a big corner we should be we should be able to like we should we've earned the right to sort of like you know, and, and, and that's tough because there's five of us that are, you know, pulling the cart. And so sometimes you end up pulling the cart in opposite directions, but um, it's like just embracing all of, all of that, embracing everybody's ideas and everybody's hopes and dreams and wishes and um, styles. And, um, and, you know, we've, we, we just, we have this amazing, um, community 
uh, as a band and the families within the band and the people that we work with and the people that have worked with us for like 32 years in some cases. Um, I mean, it's all working like we've, it's taken us just long for it to work this efficiently. It's like, we should, we should just be like killing it right now, you know, like in every, every way. And so, um, that's, I think that's, that, I think that's what we hope for musically. I think we want, I think we want to, uh, I think we want to turn the corner and I think we want to, we want to access all the best parts of each other. And, um, and we want to we want to flourish within that we just want to su you know support the best parts of each other so we consequently make the best music i think that's i think that's how it works sure i know, mean nobody wants us. to make bad music but. yeah <laughs> but 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 but, al but also there's you know sometimes there's there, you know there's a lot of ego involved and if somebody feels like they're working harder than the other person or you know what, whatever this stuff is but i again it, it it's like if you can just leave that stuff behind and focus on how do we support each other so each person like brings the best uh -huh. to this to the song we're working on right now and um and i think that's i think that's what we're trying to do that's it's sort of like you know the stuff we've been doing the last couple of years it sort of feels like that's we've we've hit on that in a few instances i i think um uh, I think I heard Stone thought that the record was done, but I know for a fact that it's not. Um, um, I don't think all the songs are done. Um, we don't. Because, you know, and, and to be fair, he he didn't tell me it was done. He said, I think we're getting close to the finish line. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, the finish, I mean, the, the, the hardest part of the making the record a lot of times is like, is figuring out which songs go in the record and do we need to record another song and what's the artwork and what's the title and what's the, all that stuff. And I know for a fact right now, we, everybody wants the summer off because last summer was a bit of a grind. Um, and so, um, you know, I think uh, for me, like in a week, I'm just, I'm shutting everything off. So, and I know, I know at that point there's, there's the record's still not done. So come September, we're still going to be like, we're going to pick up those, you know, the questions we have about where are we at and whatever, um, we're going to, we'll ask those questions again and then we'll revisit them. But, uh, you know, I mean, I think everybody hopes that we have a record out next year. I mean, that would be, you know, if we have a record out next year, that means we'll probably play a few more shows. And mm -hmm. I think there's, there's a couple of places we haven't played in quite a while. So I think we're, I think, uh, you know, I think that's, I think we have stuff penciled in. Yeah. I just love that there's still a the fire there with you guys. And, 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 and we get that, you know, when we talk about new records, that that excitement is still there. It's it's interesting to me. You put however many of you all are in the band these days. If, like the Foo Fighters, I've lost track of how many members of Pearl Jam there are at the moment. But um, but when you have the core of you all, who's been you know, you have you know what what do you say? Like um, you know, you're all ingredients in the stew, and when you put you all in there, yeah. that's the stew you get. And at this point how hard is it to make a new stew do you get what i'm saying like how do you change the taste of that soup if you want to well you know what it takes is it takes one person to fucking destroy their part of the song that you're working on if somebody like raises the level to this thing where you're going like oh my god like that that matt cameron beat is like you know that's like one of the best matt cameron beats i've ever heard everybody has to everybody has to rise up to that level and match that energy and that's that's how you change the stew that's how you like because a lot of times you'll end up playing something that you didn't know you had in you because you know or ed writes this incredible lyric or stone comes up with this groove uh, you know it's like when those things happen and you feel like i have to do whatever i can to like make this song better and and that's you know that's always the that's the exciting thing about being in the band it was like when if all five of us are super engaged everybody's in the room like really paying attention and their phones are off and whatever it's like it's it's there's a potential for somebody to come up with something that makes everybody else kind of raise the level and um 
and I, you know, I think we're, I think we've, I think we've been doing a little bit of that in the last, you know, this last year and a half of these sessions that we've had. I think there, I think there's some really special stuff happening. And um, I, I just, I, you know, I just don't, maybe it's because I'm so close to it, but I just don't know what it is. I don't know what it is right now. It's like, yeah. it, and so it, do, it doesn't feel like a record yet to me. It yeah. doesn't, it, and, it, and it doesn't, it doesn't feel as close as Mike to Stone, and um, so do you, um, do you at least got some weird stuff in there as we talk about the weird yeah, stuff. Yeah, I think so. You know, I, I mean, you know, it, it's like I think we all like have you know again we all have those hopes and dreams for what we think like the you know the a Pearl Jam song a new Pearl Jam song would be and I think there I think you know hopefully um at the end of this everybody feels like they're you know their characters a part of it you know that's that's kind of where we're at as a band right now it's like you just you know like i want to hear i want to hear mike mccready like blow the doors off you know and and i want to hear like you know a lyric from ed that makes me laugh or makes me you know really sad you know really brutally sad um because he can he can do that as good as anybody and i think everybody in the band has like an ability has like a kind of a superpower you know and it's like how do you you know how do you pull those how do we pull those superpowers out of each other to like to write great music because it's again it's like we've earned we've earned it we've earned the right to like do it however we want to um but i think showing off our strengths isn't the worst way you know for this band to operate um at this point so yeah i think, I think um, we're all better yeah i look forward to hearing it obviously and i know we're a little ways away from it uh, i and i like the stuff that's sprinkled in, in the meantime i mean uh record store day we did get the giveaway live record and i know i keep coming back to that i mean i just yield and no code the jack irons years and i know it's it's sort of we, we we i don't know why we define it by jack irons and i know why we define it by jack irons but but it, it's what i'm saying is i love his drumming but those albums are even more than that like they meant so much to me so that we've sort of been throwing little you know the uh the vinyl live albums out from both those records uh has been really important for me too um you know keeping us satisfied in the meantime i guess yeah and that, that was a you know there was a bit of a second honeymoon that the band was going through at that point i mean that was sort of when you know ed ch kind of challenged everybody to like bring more to the table creatively and i think we all took it you know personally when he asked for help and and i think those records sort of um i mean for me in particular yield has a there's a there's a real joyful um uh you know creativity going on um with the band at that point and um and jack was certainly a big big part of it he's he was he was a he was a great drummer in the studio you know he, he really um approached every song with a unique you know vigor um and that, that was always really inspirational um, to, to witness. There is a joy and there's brightness and there's light and there's low lights, uh, which is also a great song. And um, one of these days, I hope to hear what else is in the vault for that uh, era in there as well. Some lost dogs maybe lying around. Might be, it might be a couple, maybe. Maybe a couple. In the mean, yeah, I'll take the tease. That's fine. <laughs> uh, Def Charlie. And this album, catastrophic, metamorphic. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm always a fan of what you do, and I've told you that before. And I love your other side projects. This is my favorite one. Uh, awesome, it really is. This record is so good. So I'm so happy that it's going to get out into the world. Yeah, yeah, we're 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 psyched, and we're so psyched that John talked me into playing a show, which is like got me a little bit nervous, but it's uh, so yeah, Hana Festival, really right? You guys are going to play the festival? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah and, we, and, we, and he's sort of put together a really good band, and so I'm really excited about the the guys that are going to be playing with us, and so that 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 part's going to be fun, and it'll it'll be it'll be hot on the heels of a Pearl Jam tour, so um, I'll have expectations, you know, playing playing with the PJ guys. So, <laughs> and when were the when were the rehearsals even happen for that? <laughs> Uh, they're gonna ha they're gonna happen uh in august and then um and then those guys will rehearse a little bit when i'm gone and then i'll come back here for a week and we'll rehearse for a week so it's gonna be a, a stupid amount of work for a show but 
sometimes you got to do that. Sometimes you got to like just throw all your eggs into one basket and. Yeah. Well, looking forward to that show, man. Yeah. Uh, congrats on the album, Jeff. It's always a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you so much thanks, for taking the time. Thanks, Kyle. Thanks, thanks for having me. And thanks to my guest. Also, thanks to you for uh, for checking out the episode in the series. Before you get out of here, hit that subscribe button. Again, uh, you get three brand new interviews every single week. New and every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at uh, right here on YouTube or, of course, anywhere in podcast land, including iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Podchaser, NPR, or WFPK.org as well. A great way to keep up with your favorite artists and discover new ones as well. Then after that, actually head over to WFPK.org. That's where I do a show, Monday through Friday, 6 p.m. Eastern. It's an hour full of song premieres, music news, anniversary spins, bonus interviews, Monday through Friday, 6 p.m. Eastern at WFPK.org. Consequence has your music and film news. You can also find me on the social media spots, uh, Facebook, Instagram, mostly on Twitter. All three of them, the address is at Kyle Meredith. Do hope you like and follow along. That does it for another edition. I'm Kyle Meredith. I'll see you next time.